May 1987, the wet t-shirt contest. May 1987, at the time I am dating uh, a sound engineer. He travels with a band and I'm between jobs, so for a while I travel with him. One weekend we are playing Virginia Beach. We're setting up and between the time that we do the sound check and the band actually come on in the interim, there's a wet t-shirt contest. And I'm there in the club. I've never heard of such a thing. I've never seen such a thing. What I do know is that packs of very shapely women, uh, very specifically attired, arrive five minutes before this competition. And they behave in a way that it, it it's obvious to me that they are professionals at this. They just go from club to club winning these competitions and they know exactly what they're doing and they're basically, they're modeling. And it's clear to me that the club owners and managers and staff really don't like these female professionals who just go from club to club. What they're trying to do is to attract uh, male customers and they want the wet t-shirt winners to be r regular customers, not professional models who just go from club to club. So these women all start showing up. DJ walks to the stage and has a roving microphone and starts calling out people who are volunteers and all these professionals uh, raise their hands and come up and they're all strutting and they're all dressed very provocatively. In the back corner, there's a a foursome they're sitting um, on bar stools around a high circular table. They've been there a while and they all start shrieking and pointing at the fourth person at the table. She appears to be quite tipsy. She doesn't really know what's going on, but they have volunteered her for this competition and she goes along with it because she has not really no idea what's going on. But they all ho hoot and holler and make a big fuss and she goes up to the stage and stands next to all these women and is just sort of lost. The DJ goes down the line, asks them their names and, and every one of them has a prepared name and a prepared pose and all of it until he gets to the last girl she is still tipsy and staring at the crowd and really has no idea what, quite what she's doing there her name is Sarah and she's a kindergarten teacher and at that moment everybody in the club sort of falls in love with her because she's very sweet and very naive and very innocent and it's not really quite consensual what's happening here. Then they come around with the buckets of ice and they dump ice on top of these women one after another and all the women who are basically make it their livelihood to be there, they all know what's coming and they know how to stand and how to hold themselves and how to strut immediately afterwards to be as sexually provocative as they can. And when we get to Sarah, the kindergarten teacher, she, she just stands there. They dump water on her and she turns into a drowned rat. She just stands there. Her hair is draped over her shoulders. She's got her shoulders up. She's bent forward. She looks humiliated. I'm a woman watching this and I still feel like, you know, if I was a guy right now, I would feel really ashamed. This is scummy. It's horrible. What is the DJ doing? Why is he even letting this happen? She didn't consent to this. She's not capable of consent. This is wrong. It's horrible. Then they go around and they want applause. All the professionals, there's a round of polite applause for them. And then it gets to Sarah and the entire male population of the club goes wild because she's just looking so pitiful and they're so greedy and it's gross and it's dehumanizing and all these men have been guilt tripped and they so they applaud like crazy and she goes home with the hundred dollars and still even when it's handed to her in an envelope she goes back to her friends and she still really isn't sure what's happening as i'm watching this happening my brain is lit up with a memory from when i was i must have been four or five 
something that has been an in-joke between my parents my entire life that I never understood. The joke was that my dad would say, oh, let's go to church and look all happy. And my mother would hit him. And then they would laugh and giggle, and I, it made no sense. I, c- I can remember my, my, my brother, older brother, getting uh, – apparently was involved in some sort of church thing. He announces at breakfast that something's going to happen on Sunday, and he wants my parents to be there to – witness some celebration at the church my my dad is very angry and refuses and my mother says let's just be supportive and go so they go and there i am on a sunday morning at a church i don't know uh, i see my brother up front and i i don't understand this church it's nothing i've seen it looks like a church except at the front there's a there's a damn pool of water and there's my brother and he's wearing some sort of sheep thing like a like a big caftan made out of a white sheet. And there's a minister babbling on and on, and my brother goes down the steps into the pool, the, and the preacher goes with him and dunks my brother underwater, and he comes up, and and there's much hooting and hollering and the rest of it. and I don't know what just happened. And then right behind my brother is a, a, t- a girl his age. She's 15, and she's wearing the same white caftan, and she walks into the water and the priest dunks her underwater and she comes up my dad sitting in the pew and suddenly getting really animated uh, and talking about how good this was and what a great church this was and my mother kept reaching over she had long nails and she was pinching my dad's forearm with her nails and trying to get him to shut up and I never ever understood this and then uh, for years after my dad was cracking a joke about oh let's all go to church and and there was something smarmy about it that i never understood but it was this ongoing in joke back to the club as soon as the contest is over all the models pack up fast and split the foursome at the back is being bombarded by men harassing the three friends for letting her deal in this situation and various other men are trying to get the poor victim away from her horrible friends and take her home somewhere safe or take her home somewhere not very safe. They eventually leave. Now it's jumped three hours. The band's finished playing. We get to go home early because we're going to be playing there the following night so we don't have to tear down the stage equipment. It's It's early evening. It's still 10 or 11. We jump in a van and drive to the far end of Virginia Beach to see some friends of the band. I don't know. I just go along. Whatever. We get there. They're just finishing up one set. They're going to take a 30-minute break. And what do you know? Another wet t-shirt contest. And the models begin arriving. And I recognize a couple of them, but I guess this is the second shift, so we've got some new blood coming in. And they're all doing the exact same routine as before, standing around, strutting their stuff. And in the back corner... There's the same foursome at bar stools. They're going to do the exact same routine. They're going to push the drunk, naive, clueless gal who was a kindergarten teacher only. Now her name is Tiffany. And she's a pediatric ICU nurse or something else really cute and she still stammers and she has the deer in the headlights routine down and my god what a masterpiece of manipulation and social engineering she's brilliant that's my story 